So let's take a look at creating our first basic motion animation using this Plinko example. So the first thing I'd like to do, jump into my motion manager here, over to the left, switch from animation to basic motion. Once I've done that, before I even get started, one thing I might want to change is kind of the settings or the options within the basic motion. So if I navigate over to this gear wheel icon, I have the motion study properties. So here I just have a few options or settings I can change. So how many frames per second, maybe I'd like to increase this, let's say 30 or so, as well as the geometry accuracy and 3D contact resolution. And I can change this accuracy to be higher or a lower value. So maybe I'm gonna increase the accuracy here. So that's gonna make my motion uh, more accurate, but of course that's gonna take a little bit more calculation time as well. And it is important to note here that basic motion studies are not exact and are in fact approximations. So this is why increasing these accuracy slide bars may be useful. And once I'm happy with that, I can just hit the green check. And now I'm just gonna try to add gravity and contact as well. And let's first take a look at adding gravity to my study. I'll just click on this icon here. And here I can define pretty much direction I'd like gravity to go in, uh, as well as the actual gravity value. So I'm gonna just leave the default gravity value here, uh, but I might change the direction. I want it to be going probably in the Y direction. So I can use any edge if I'd like, any edge within a, a specific assembly or X direction, Y direction, Z direction. I'm gonna try Y in this case, because looking down at my triad here, it looks like Y should be the correct direction for my gravity here. And once I'm happy with that, just hit the green check. And notice that has now added new information to my motion manager here. So if I were just to calculate our playthrough currently, let's see what might happen here. So you may have noticed that happened pretty quickly there, but let's try playing again there. Looks like my disc is just falling straight down. And I can try to move the time bar to see that as well. Okay. So we can see there's my disc and then it just very quickly falls straight through my Plinko board. This in fact makes sense because I've added gravity, but I haven't added contact yet. So it's not seeing any contact between components, only gravity has been added. And right now my disc is falling because it's not fixed. But notice the Plinko board is not falling because this is a fixed component in my assembly or grounded component in my assembly right now. So hence I see the disc falling, but the Plinko board is staying because it's been fixed. So what we'd also like to add here is contact since it shouldn't be falling just straight through my Plinko board. It should be kind of running down the Plinko board as it would in the real world scenario. So I need to add contact here as well. So I can just navigate to this icon here and add some contact. And within my contact uh, property side panel here, uh, all I really need to do is select the bodies that will be in contact with each other. So in this case, it would just be the two main bodies here, both the Plinko disk and what it's coming in contact with, which would be my Plinko board. So I can just grab those two bodies here and hit the green check, say okay. And now I should see something else going into my motion manager here under the solid contact. So let's try to calculate once more here. And now we can see the Plinko disc running through the Plinko board as we may expect. So from this quick motion study, we have my disc dropping down the board as you would expect in a real world scenario. This is showing both the effects of gravity and contact between my components.